Hi everybody, thanks for joining. Uh, I'm just going to lower the volume of my microphone a little bit. I think it's a little bit too loud. Just double check. Seems a little bit better. So uh, let's get started. So um, for those who didn't see the tweet, um, I am going to focus today on um, how I discovered uh, remote code execution of vulnerability in the Technicolor uh, 7210 uh, cable modem. Um, this vulnerability is in the SMB app. It's an executable that uh, is used to manage the file sharing capability of the of this modem of this uh, modem slash router uh, it runs on the embedded linux that the modem contains um, it is a two a dual operative system modem with uh, echos as a real-time os which takes care uh, takes uh, care of the networking part uh, both on the cable modem side and on the lan side uh, and also the wireless and then uh, there's this uh, linux based embedded os that takes care of the nas the network at their attached storage functionality which includes the the streaming the file storage um, and all those types of things like usb uh, devices and so this is this follows up on a series of blog posts and also streams i already did ab about this modem um, i have disclosed this vulnerability exactly 120 days ago um, in the last 47 days 48 days uh, technicolor became unresponsible in unresponsive so i'm just gonna publicly release uh, the details of the vulnerability um, and on this stream I will uh, revisit how I found uh, the vulnerability um, you can also see all the details on, on a blog post that I else already published uh, so let's just uh, get down to it so So last time I showed you, we were I was reversing one of the applications that could be found on the firmware of uh, this embedded Linux, and that application was the where is it? MSC app. So we basically found a way to we we basically reverse engineered. Um, all the commands that this app received over uh, a UDP socket. So you can see here that we were able to uh, do the initial command that always needs to be sent to initialize the, the application. And basically this section here is what is used this, uh, to, to initialize the configuration file. Uh, and then we have all the other commands, the enable, the disable, the receive, rescan, the get state. So basically this commands or this app is used to control another application, uh, which is the one responsible for the streaming of 
the movies or mp3 or the audio files the video audio files uh, photographs or images whatever you have on your um, usb drive that you connect into the into the router uh, but uh, that was uh, the last stream this stream we're going to focus on the SMB app uh, so the first thing we are to do is to um, try to run this application this executable and we're going to use the uh, QEMU, uh, QEMU to to run it because it's a MIPS app, a MIPS uh, binary, uh, so we cannot run it directly. So let's just and here it is. This is the application running. You can see here uh, clearly stated what this is. This application is all about. This binary is all about. You can see here it has also uh, some uh, USB functionality and basically you can see here as well now it started up and is listening on port 49182 as in UDP for for commands and once again this uh, this port is, is this way of interacting with these executables is done in this manner because the echoes part so the real-time OS that takes care of everything else in the router needs to communicate with these applications why because that's the part that also contains the web interface so any changes that you want to do on the web interface to the configuration of the router like changing for instance the, the file share name you do it on the web interface the echoes part of the, brow the the router sends it over UDP to this port uh, in a specific format and then this application says okay I received this command to change the name of the file share so it just does that by changing the configurations of the Samba because for instance the file shares are done by are provided by SMB by Samba um, and for instance as well for the password if you want to change the, the the file share password so that's how it works um, so let's um, let's have a look at the SMB app in uh, in cutter here it is Just gonna copy it to the desktop. Uh, let's just launch it in R2. I'm gonna disable an auto analysis because I I don't like it. It's it does a lot of things for you. Uh, but it also takes a lot of time doing s sometimes analysis that you don't really want. Um, so, anyways, so what I uh, so let's just this is the entry point. So let's just uh, define the function. So what I want to do, let's see if I remember the, the comments. So let's activate, yes, activate assembly emulation. Let's try to define the function again because it didn't do that. Okay, now it did. In any case, if we go to the entry, no, entry points, that's no, sorry. The symbols part, we should have. A 
function here called main yeah that's it so this is the main function that where everything actually starts to make some sense uh, let's just look at the graph of this function um, so let's scroll up a little bit we are So, so here it is. Every time you launch the application, that's the first thing that gets executed. It does a bunch of initialization. So I went through it and you can see here some error stating that you cannot open the socket. So most likely the, the control uh, socket. Just make this a little bit wider so that we don't have to be doing so much horizontal scan, uh, scrolling and that's because it's basically calling here the import socket uh, function let me just maybe change here because this is not very readable let's try the matrix to green I was working on some other executable that made it a little bit okay dark not too much do we have like default maybe let's just try the default again no seriously okay let's leave tangle so you can see here it's just, now it's easier to read uh, so you can see here the import socket uh, basically they are trying to open the socket uh, if it fails it presents this message and and then exits the application otherwise it continues on it sets some options on the socket this is most likely the local address or the any address so basically the listen on all interfaces address that they are working here that they are defining here so most likely uh, h2nl uh, function since the first parameter is zero so it's the any addresses so is the what would be the equivalent in ipv4 as 0.0.0.0.0 .0 .0 .0 .0. Uh, and then we have here this is h2ns so this is the port and if we let's say it's decimal and you can see here yeah right this is the port so it's 49182 uh, which is basically what you see here as well so if we go forward and then it tries to bind so it tries to bind most likely if it fails it exits otherwise yeah, it tries to get the error message and then it says it will try to rebind otherwise and when it succeeds it gets to this point he sets some environmental variables um, so the load library path sets that environmental variable and then it makes uh, a FIFO uh, edit let's just uh, I think it was one it was one of the things I had to create uh, yeah it was this yeah I had to create this file otherwise the application uh, would not work so this is the the file that uh, um, is used to create uh, uh, for this function here and then it's called open probably it's used for something else I, I haven't figured out why it's used but it's needed uh, so you can see here fa fatal error enabled to open and then it's this file here um, 
maybe something to investigate in the future. Not sure if it's interesting or not. In any case, it has some signaling, some settings. Okay, and this is the main thing that we need to look at. This is where it starts to receive packets from uh, the buffer, from uh, the socket, sorry. And let's see. Okay, and the buffer size uh, or the amount of packet, the uh, bytes that it's going to read from uh, the socket is 2052, which is exactly the same amount that um, the MSC app would read from the socket as well. So it's, it's, it's all very similar. Then if it fails from the receive from, it will print could not receive data. Okay, otherwise, yes, otherwise, if it everything succeeded, it will call the function execute command. So if we come here to the execute command, you can see here it's this function. So let's just create or define a function here. So it's so we can look at the graph. Okay, this is a big graph. If I remember correctly, this function is is not very. It's way too much branching. Uh, can I? going to see if I could but apparently not let's just move upwards then just a little bit slowly going a little bit beyond capabilities but it's really really slow okay so we might have to give up on using the graph because otherwise I'll have to switch to to the non virtualized version because this is a little bit too sluggish for me uh, a little bit too slow so let's just look at the disassembly I think it's even a little bit easier in this case because there's a lot of branching um, so you can see here there is some initialization that needs to happen that's clear And basically what I did is that I knew uh, from the previous analysis that allowed me to identify that there was that uh, remote code execution through the web interface. Uh, that there were um, some telnet functionalities to the string analysis, that there was some uh, capability to launch telnet so basically what I did was I searched for the string and I can show you actually if we put here telnet you can see here there is some launching telnet killing telnet D you can see here this is the execution of the command this is the actual uh, string that is passed to the system function, this, uh, the one that spawns or that launches Telnet, executes Telnet in this case. Um, so basically I, I 
just uh, you can see here as well the function already for the make acknowledgement packet where it says succeeded or not uh, let's just see common disable common succeeded failed uh, amount so I just went and went and went I, I should have done a little bit of a note in which address this was so let me just see do I have a go to or something Sorry, I'm a little bit, I'm still a little bit noob uh, when it comes to, uh, I don't remember the, ah, here it is, oh wow, right in front of my eyes, anyways, so if I remember correctly, it's gonna be easier if I just put in down this address and here it is okay perfect so I'm just using actually the the blog post that I posted with the <laughs> because uh, yeah there's there's basically the, the the technical details are there and it makes it easier to show you what I found so basically I searched to the function uh, to to see because I was also not only just searching for the launching functionality so how does it launch telnet but also to see what other functionality uh, what other types of commands I could send to the application so in in any case I ended up finding it uh, here in this uh, this part of the code and actually if we go to the graph function now it's probably easy it's or it's already there and you can see here if we go a little bit up yeah you can see here that um, this is where it basically takes care of the um, parsing of the command so you send a command to the application on that specific socket on that port and when it gets here that's where it starts to process to to validate so if it, if it gets to this point it's gonna do some comparisons uh, and for instance you can see here it's doing a comparison with FFF and if it's with the value at this loaded uh, from this specific offset into V0 it does um, an AND, a bitwise AND with 1 and a bitwise AND with FFF FF, sorry not FFF, FF um, and then depending on the result it says okay you are trying to launch uh, telnet and you can see here that it will call system with the string uh, telnet for sure let's see if it if if it is able to to load the string reference because it doesn't seem to no yeah it loaded it here so you can see here that it's calling system with the telnet and then if we look if the result is something different then it will kill the telnet D so so okay so we identified in the code where it loads uh, where it uh, launches uh, where it controls telnet when it launches it and when it kills it so we need to understand how the packet needs to be constructed so basically what I did at the time was I 
did because the function is is way too complex for you to look at every single branch what i did is basically i backtracked the execution of the flow of the code uh, so that it would end up in this function here or in this section of the function and from that i constructed the packet so we we know that at some point in time it compare it does uh, a bitwise or uh, sorry a bitwise and um, and then basically here it's doing a mem copy from v0 v0 is probably the buffer it's probably the buffer yeah it's probably the buffer Let me double check mem copy. I think it's source destination. The parameters, the parameter order. I don't remember. Oh no, it's actually here. So is so is S one, S two, then the size that needs to be copied. So basically, we are copying uh, four four bytes. For most likely what is what seems to be the buffer and we are storing it in a1 for some reason and then we don't use it for now I don't think we are using it for now okay so let's just uh, Let's just move. I think it's basically, yeah, it's copying four bytes of the packet into the stack. And then basically if the bitwise is one if it equals zero so the comparison is successful it starts it's not successful it's not mm. no it's one yeah if it's one then it starts telnet yeah that's what it looks like okay so if we go a little bit further up okay you can see here that is doing some comparison with 107 so if so it loads it it stores uh, in the register v0 uh, 107 in exa hexadecimal then it loads v1 from this offset 594 let's me let this see okay that offset and it compares it so we know that it needs to be 107 okay so if we go back if we backtrack okay so it's comparing if it's 103 um, but if it is it goes on this green branch if it isn't it just goes on to the 107 so we don't really care about that and by the way this is words that it's loading so if it's words is yeah it's two bytes that it is loading it that is loading so we, we can see here so we know that it's comparing two bytes at a time so 
and by the way uh, words in MIPS has a different meaning than x86 I found out that in the last stream that I did uh, basically words in x86 would be uh, uh, was it words? no sorry in MIPS it's four bytes half word is two bytes exactly so in MIPS a uh, word is four bytes when in x86 a, wor a double word would be the four bytes um, so yeah that's a little bit of a difference that we have to take into account when we are doing the math uh, SLTI so tests if one register is less than a constant so if it's less than 103 so we don't care about this check either so if we follow <coughs> the work the 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 flow once again comparing with 102 uh, we don't really care so it's it's starting to look like that the first thing we need to send is a 107 as the command this is also comparing to one or to 23 in hexadecimal so if we continue to follow the code backtrack <coughs> sorry if we continue to backtrack 22 continue to backtrack oh geez this is really slow okay uh, if we continue to backtrack yes less than 12 so it's not so it's gonna just continue oh, and we're starting to reach the main i think we're st oh, sorry i think we are very close to the main body yeah it's comparison this is loading a half word so uh, two bytes yep so we don't really care about this one yeah it doesn't have any impact it loads words stores it then it adds v0 loads from 594 and then compares if it's 11 it goes somewhere if it's not it goes somewhere else and here it is basically now we are at uh, you are at the initial so what did we learn we learned that we need to send um, basically uh, 107 and then a 1 in the UDP packet so So let's just let's just try that. I just want to com confirm, but yeah, but the one hundred and seven for sure needs to be two bytes only. Yeah, because here it's half word. Yeah, that's the yeah that's two bytes. Do do bear in mind that I, even though I only uh, posted. <laughs> the blog post today I've written this blog post uh, 120 days ago so the four months ago so even though I remember more or less what I did at the time 
I still need to confirm some of the details because I don't remember them uh, as vividly as I would back then. So definitely uh, the first, if we look here, I just, I can confirm on the blog post, but now it's more interesting like this. Yeah, definitely this is where the packet is. Is where the packet is and then basically it loads two bytes from it and then it goes on to compare it so basically the what defines the command that you are sending to the application is the first two bytes yeah and then Definitely it. Definitely it. And then uh, let me go see if I can find it again. Get state. Create network. You can see here create network folder. So one of the commands. Remove network folder. Okay. So the the commands don't seem very difficult. Uh, let's look. Okay, so let's just let's try to do something then. So this is what we used in the previous stream. So let's just be nifty. And just um, just reuse stuff. Uh, so let's just uh, say. Uh, so it's actually this is exactly the same thing. The port is different though. So the port ends in two. Uh, let's just leave this as it is. Oh, we can comment these lines out. It doesn't. It doesn't. Um, it doesn't really matter. Okay. So this is still a datagram. So let's say SMB launch. Telnet command. So the packet should be something like two bytes, one slash x seven. So one hundred and seven in exa. That's the first byte. Let's just try it like that. See what the app responds. Most likely, it's going to respond that it hasn't been initialized yet. So, since I don't want to reveal another zero day that I have found, 
<laughs> I don't want to fail in OPSEC because I, I just want to initialize the app. So I'm just going to... Uh, because uh, by showing you how to initialize the app, I'm most likely going to show you as well another zero day that I found. And that's not cool. Uh, so let's just see who it is. So it's not this one. So what I want to do is just say, there's I'm just gonna send okay now let me go back I forgot that I I needed this command and yeah I don't definitely we don't want to reveal that one yet I haven't yet reported details uh, to Technicolor So let's just be polite about it. And so now the app m should be initialized. So if I do this, no, oh, actually it's not yet initialized. It should have been initialized. Interesting. Okay, <laughs> let's try that again. So what I'm going to do, what can I do in order to still show you while I, I debug this thing? Uh, well, I can always use, I can always use the actual device. Uh, oh, I see, I see what I'm doing wrong. Okay, this is, I had the wrong IP address there. Let's try it again. Let's okay, yeah, perfect. Now it's it's initialized. So I can show you again. So you can see here uh, that the application is now it received this command. Uh, which is basically the initialization command. Uh, so now if I send this, it should work. And in this case, just by sending the X0107, you get launching Telnet and launching HTTP, HTTPD, dropping all ACMP echo and enable Linux service something 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 that most likely is erroneous because it's basically reading from an, from the memory because I didn't send enough data so it looks like there's some thing here like um, uh, reading too much data from memory that you haven't actually sent so it looks like it so let's just just uh, see so we send this and it enabled a bunch of things what if we send x00 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 so Let's just send four extra bytes and maybe no just four extra bytes as zero 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 what does it do okay you can see here this changed but everything else is the same so we definitely hit the right command that we need to send because you can see from the strings now the only missing part is how can we make it kill Telnet and the other stuff? OK. 
okay so let's do the let's do the metasploit way basically let's put a bunch of a's and see what falls out of the tree let's see what does it do oh so we got uh, one saying killing httpd we still don't seem to have control of what this number is for some reason i always like to do this um, did I? Um, anyways so so what if i do a zero a zero sorry about that I fail at Vim. That's the story of my life. I'm lucky enough that I know how to exit Vim apparently. Anything else is a challenge. So let's make this all zeros. The, f the next four bytes. Actually, I could just look at the disassembly, but this is. So killing HTTPD. Okay. That looks good. Uh, So there are some strings about this, right? Yes. So you can see here. Oh, it's serving from this directory. Uh, yeah, that's yeah, that's mounted from as well the Linux apps, I think. two more bytes just for the sake oh now we are also killing telnet and killing httpd interesting uh, so what if i say one here what does it do launching telnet b and killing httpd and dropping all ICM pack ECM echo. Interesting that it says enable Linux service one. Now it doesn't. Okay, and if we do like this, okay, so it's quite repro. No, you can reproduce it quite easily. So what? is so basically it seems like this last byte can or this last two bytes can control a lot of things so because we did see on the disassembly that it was doing a bitwise and and usually bitwise ends are either with zero zero two zero four zero eight and it goes on on uh, powers of two so what happens if we do this so yeah you can see here that it's basically killing all the services and still dropping uh telnet uh dropping ecmp echo traffic so what if and if we do a four Oh, you can see now if we do a four, it kills Telnet D, HTTPD, and runs ECMP Echo. So we enable the Linux service four. So this is starting to really look like, uh, yeah, definitely, it's a bit 
y's end. So what we can do, hmm. as what can we do? We can uh, do a bit y's end. So if we do, if we do, if we say it's a zero here, disables everything, right? So let's just, let's just try that. So that's that's a zero zero, and then when we send the four, is enable ECMP. If we want HTTPD, which would be maybe if that is the case in any case we can already execute commands so we can already launch telnet so we already achieved yeah definitely so zero one is the enable telnet which is right let's do zero to what does it do it's the one for you can see here launching httpd and it kills telnet and drops all this mp traffic and if we do here a four yeah it kills all services except running icmp echo so and then if we do basically a bitwise and or in this case or if we do a bitwise or with these values we can enable multiple devices at the same time or multiple services sorry at the same time for sure because of the bitwise and that um, we could see in the in the disassembly it's most likely the same operation that is applying on, not only to Telnet, to when it launches Telnet, but also to when it launches all the other services. So, what if I send these commands? So this one is running everything. So let's just send it to the real thing i'm not sure if it's actually if it actually launched telnet let's just 
Uh, actually, let's just send the, the enable template command. So let's see if it actually launched telnet. I don't think so. No, I don't think. Uh, not launched. No, I don't think. Yeah, it didn't. So let's see if the the telnet binary is here somewhere. Uh, see if it actually launches because if it doesn't launch, I think uh, I think it's busybox that has the telnet. Uh, I think it's busybox that has the telnet, so I have to create the sim link for it to launch. Yeah, telnet D. Okay, so I need to create a sim link. Uh, so let's just do busy box S H. Busy box LS. Change it here, bin. Busy box ls let's do busy box ln uh, help uh, make a sim links instead of hard links the other way around uh, sometimes I also fail fail at Linux right maybe it needs a soft maybe it needs to be a soft link yeah yeah definitely needed to be a soft link so now we have a sim link. So if we do this, it fails. Oh, but it's listening. It's listening on uh, in this port. So let's just see what IP. Yeah, definitely. So it it will work. Uh, so let's just kill it. Oh, sorry. Kill minus nine. Oh, sudo. So if we look at it, yeah, it's not running anymore. So if we run the SMB app. Oh, I'll, I'll have to reinitialize the app again. <laughs> oh. Okay, let's just... Uh, actually, I don't need to hide it from you guys because I already changed the code. So let's just let's just run it because this will not yeah this will not exploit we'll just enable the app okay so it enabled the app um, so the next thing is to actually run the test dot pi says launching telnet let's see if it actually worked
No, it did not. Well, it might be something related with because this is not the act, not the actual hardware. So let's just might be some configurations. I don't want to be losing time debugging this, so I will just do it against the actual an actual physical hardware which is running. Uh, I think this is the address. Let's just yeah, send it. So it seems that the IP, apparently it's not this IP address. Let me just check what IP address. Uh, what IP address? Is it this the one? It should be the, the 10. Uh, maybe the machine is down actually. Maybe the, I, I turned it off. I don't remember. No, it's up, huh? Hey, it is this one. So why isn't it working? it's in need of a reboot I guess because uh, am I in the same network yeah I'm in the same network it's not a different not in a different VLAN so why not in a different VLAN so some reason maybe it needs to to restart hmm. interesting let's what if we try to actually send to the MSC app which should also be running Instead of sending that, let's just send the get state command because I don't want to mess with that. What whatever is happening on that app. Yep, it's perfect. Let's try that. No, it's it's not responded. Maybe it's crashed because of the tests that I done. Um, but in any case, you can see here. I just wanted to show you. Um, the telnet login uh, working um, but for some reason the app is not working so let me just for opsec failure to avoid opsec failures actually let me just pause the stream there and let me confirm that this is the address because I'll have to use passwords and stuff and things that I don't want to show you guys because you know passwords uh, where did I put that okay it's oops so password modem paste modem configuration USB hmm. hex 
can I see the, the devices on this thing? Where can I see the address of this thing? Oh, here it is. Oh, it's not actually that IP address. That IP address must be from some other... Because it's that network is DHCP. Um, so let's just... Let's just take a look at what was <laughs> once again. I forgot. No, uh, yeah, I'm in the right place. So the address is 206 actually. So let's let's try that again. Actually, there is a machine on 10, but apparently it's not that one. I thought it was maybe well reboots whatever they changed IP address yes okay so that's perfect so let's just send it to the to where we actually want to send it um, and let's send this which is what we want to send Oh, it succeeded. So if we do here, we go. We got the telnet. So now, if we go and say disable everything and we send it, succeeded. And if we try to connect. It no longer works. Uh, sorry. So this is pretty cool. Uh, let's send then. If we do send a three. So you can see here, it worked, the HTTP server. If we connect, it also enabled Telnet, but if we try to ping, it doesn't work. So let's try to enable every single service, including the ping. So if we do, or we can just try let's let's try to enable the ping the S icmp and disable everything else so if we do this succeeded if we try to wget it fails if we try to telnet it fails if we try to ping it works so you can see here so basically this is what I discovered. I discovered that there is functionality on the SMB app to launch the, the Telnet um, daemon um, directly without actually exploiting the, the previous vulnerability that I have found. Um, And and basically get rem still get remote code execution on the Linux part, so through the telnet. Even though it prompt, uh, if you noticed, uh, it prompt for a password. Which one would have to try and find out exactly what it is still it's a vulnerability root for sure and then something i don't know something else something some password i once again i didn't end up cracking this password because i found uh, another way in which uh, doesn't need to have a password and that's 
the other uh, zero day that I didn't want to show you uh, because uh, for it to work it also needs to have the initialization code uh, being sent and the script that I had to do that had uh, the exploit on it which is uh, another thing but uh, I didn't want to show you guys because I haven't disclosed full details with I only uh, full details with Technicolor, I only told them that I have found another vulnerability uh, but I was looking for them to fix this one before I could or before I could uh, uh, release uh, further details on the other uh, let's see what I do, I'm not sure if I'm gonna still try to uh, report back to them uh this new vulnerability which is in well it's in a way related with uh the vulnerability that i've found and that they fixed on the web interface it's basically it's uh it's kind of the same uh functionality um I, I, I did in my exchange with them I did send them like look uh, the easiest way to for you to fix all of these kind of things that I am finding in the Linux part is just to create a virtual interface uh, that this uh, that is only used for the management application so your echoes part instead of talking with the Linux part over the normal network the LAN network just create a virtual interface uh, because they can control the hardware from the Echoes part, that's why they can run Linux at the same time as they run uh, as they run the Echoes part. Because it's basically it's not virtualization or anything like that. It's just uh, the platform itself allows for that. So they for sure they can create some sort of virtual interface. Uh, that is exposed to the Linux part as it is USB or anything else uh, and just put this MSC app and this SMB app only listening to that interface which the other party talking to that uh, would be the echoes and not everybody that is in a LAN so that would isolate the problem they would it wouldn't fix the vulnerabilities per se but it would isolate the problem it would segregate the problem only if if you you would only be able to access that functionality if you had owned the echoes part of the router or, and if you did that it it doesn't really matter what you can do with the with the linux part because you already owned the the complete device you already own the 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 most important part of the device so it's it not gonna gain much by by oh i can also hack the linux yeah but you already hacked the i don't want to call it an, the hypervisor because it's not but the 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 underlying os from where the linux embedded uh, os is running from so i basically I, that's my advice to them I don't know if they are falling up on that, if they are not, if they don't really care anymore. Um, I haven't gotten anything else uh, from them in 47 days. Uh, I contacted them also uh, like 20 ish days. I don't think it was even 20 days, I can confirm, but I. I contacted them uh, uh, not too long ago. Yeah, it was on the eighth. So the last con the last time I heard from them was on the seventh of September, and now is the twenty fourth. So that's the forty seven days, twenty uh, fourth of October. Sorry, and that's the the forty seven days. And I also contacted them on the eighth of October, but. In any case, they they didn't reply. So we are uh, do we are doing this for 
<laughs> one hour and twenty. But I this is in any case in a nutshell. Um, this is what I did in order to to find this vulnerability. I knew from the string analysis beforehand that there was some functionality to launch Telnet uh, natively. So I just went through the source code. I looked at the main function, then I saw that there was there was a loop receiving packets from this socket on port uh, forty nine one eighty two. I'm not mistaken and then I saw the execute command then I went to the strings I noticed I searched for telnet and I confirmed okay this is what I'm looking for and then I basically went through the execute function trying to to see uh, where this functionality the execute function sorry the execute command function and to see where the functionality was and then because the, the flow graph was so complex, because there are so many commands that you can send to this app, that uh, I basically said, okay, let's just backtrack the flow uh, and try to understand what parameters do I, or what bytes do I need to send to this socket in order to, to trigger the, the telnet uh, spawning. Because by default, it doesn't. The default is basically uh, the HTTP uh, server is running. Uh, ping, I think, is enabled as well. Uh, but anything else is uh, disabled, so the telnet is disabled. So you, by using this, by sending uh, this command here, this packet, you can uh, basically enable telnet and if you do a um, a bitwise end with all of this uh, with these three values then you can enable everything and if you send a zero you basically disable everything so it's still what time is it so we can we can still do a little bit more but uh, sure what can we do some more interesting stuff well because the next interesting stuff i found was the other zero day which i don't want to disclose on um, i guess we can improve I guess we can improve this a little bit. Uh, I guess we can improve this a little bit. this is an R so let's just because I'm lazy I can't I can't do many hexadecimal calculations so let's just see if we can come up with so if we do one or uh, two or four that gives us seven. Oh, sorry. So enable everything equals zero x zero seven. So if we do send here, sorry, if we do send here this, this is this part here is more documentation as at this point in time than anything else, because basically we are just hard coding the values anyway so let's just yeah you can see here so it's enabled everything yeah perfect uh, we can 
So what we can do to improve this is as well is uh, let me Google search that. Um, Python pack, I think. Uh, I think this is it. yes so let's see let's make this a little bit better a little bit less art coded so import struct um, and then um, let's see if I can print uh, struct dot pack just want to be sure I'm not doing anything so it should be like this and I want a short an unsigned short so an H and if I do this enable everything Oh, thank you. Didn't do anything. Um, okay, let's. Uh, uh, this. Is it a bit like this? No. A number is required, not string. Am I doing something wrong here? Okay, let's just oh. let's just drop something now. Ah, that's the best. So struct dot pack. See what happens. So like this, 0x07, what do you do? Okay, oh, so that's the first thing. Yes, that's the first thing, it's wrong. And we want to do this. So if we do like this, 0x2, 0x3, we get the 7. Okay, so I'm in the right path, so let's just improve it. So, what we want is say, okay, service equals, and then we can just say this, and we can take this one out. this one out and we can say packet plus equals pack dot no sorry struct dot pack so like this h and service hopefully this will work and let's just say enable telnet will this do? Oh, lol. Not the right thing. Yep, it will work. And if we say, okay, let's enable Telnet and enable HTTPD. Yes, I see. Yep, it's working. So that's the best way to do it, I think. And we can do like uh, we can do better. We can do service pipe equals enable HTTP 
says five vehicles. Right. Does it? I actually don't know if Python has this operator. This is interesting. I don't remember. Maybe it doesn't. Uh, let's try it. Yeah, it does. So fine. That's perfect. So anyway, if we want to do something, we can just make it easy like this. Okay, so let's just move test by for test by dash msc app. I'm gonna separate the code. Uh, uh, okay. Just make send the app. Test MSC app. So we don't care about this one. Care about this one. And we don't care about this code here. And this is only the MSC app related code. And then the test SMD app by just this just for future reference. I don't care about this port. For now I don't care about this address of the physical machine. I don't care about this. Oh god damn it. Uh, yes, like this. And if we want as well service because if we do this, uh, it doesn't really matter what we did before. It will determine. It will make it a zero, I think. Uh, oops. No. No work. I have to make it. Yes, that will work. Yeah. Okay, so. So, yep. So, this is a little bit of a script then. Or a little script. So, it's easier for us to just. The next step would be to ask the user what he wants to do, but yeah, that's, that's, not, that's not really interesting. This is just to make us our life a little bit easier if we want to turn that into the device uh, hmm. I did disable telnet again didn't I for no I did not let me see if I because I remember that I changed the root password, I think. Let me just try some passwords because I might be able to show you now. Maybe I didn't. No, because I found the other way around it. And I then didn't crack the password. I did, did I change it though? Um, I don't think so. If I did, I would have put some other easier password to remember for sure no I just wanted to show you the live file system but I don't remember the password right now I can trigger I can actually trigger I can actually trigger the other exploit so that I don't have to use the password though and I can still show you uh, the file system because then I can launch a telnet uh, without the password so let's just do that it's really <laughs> it's just for for your curiosity's sake I actually didn't see if there's much talk on the stream but not really so Let's just do that because we are gangsters. We are. I'm actually in a black hoodie, by the way. That's if that's not how hackers work. 
I don't know. Let's just yeah, let's just uh, and if we try that now it's working and it will fail. So for OPSEC's sake, let me just uh, let me just not show you what I'm going to do next. Otherwise, I'll be revealing the zero day, and that's not good. It's not a good idea. It's not a good idea. How do I do that? Yep, here it is. the right host so that's pointing no. so it seems that it worked let's launch and I, yep it worked okay so that's oh wait ah damn it it didn't work now it didn't work because I already had. Yeah, it doesn't work. Okay, so let's let's kill. Let's just kill everything. Okay, that's right. Hmm. That's not working. Sending this to the right. Okay, well. not actually working it's not doing what it's supposed to do same connection hmm, interesting well this is something that I will have to to debug why now it's uh, why it's not working. Maybe I'm sending it to the wrong IP address once again. Maybe no, it's the actual one. Then the port is the correct one, right? Yeah, the port is the actual one. Uh, so why aren't you? Um, interesting. Hmm. Uh, maybe I just need to send some water. Well, I'm not being able um, to launch make it work so I think we'll just leave it as it is and I will uh, I will debug it another time um, most likely it needs a little bit of a a little bit of a restart probably needs because I, st I can still I can still launch telnet but not in the way that I want for some reason is not working very well so 
in any case uh, I think that's pretty much it uh, I showed you how I got to the to discovering uh, this hidden uh, functionality that controls a bunch of services in the Linux part of the of the router I uh, I hope you enjoyed it uh, and I'll uh, in the future I'll do some other streams uh, maybe focused more on the on building something rather than breaking something uh, because that's mostly what I do nowadays is just build uh, things not break things <laughs> so uh, I was thinking about something like for malware analysis um, I had some ideas so let's see what I can come up to come up with uh, do some tests see if it's worth worthwhile and then I will uh, stream it as I go through uh, through it building some capability or uh, something more on the the builder side not on the breaker side so I'll probably wear a white hoodie by at that point instead of a black hoodie <laughs> while I'm doing it uh, in any case thanks for listening and for watching and uh, I guess uh, I'll talk to you soon cheers bye bye